How's it going everyone and welcome to Form Our Ranch. Today I'm going to be giving a quick comparison between two ATN thermal optics and that is the Thor LT versus the Thor 4. Now if you're someone who's on the fence between these two optics I'm hoping to address some questions in terms of the differences in features and specs between the two so that I can help you make a better decision if you're on the fence on getting into one or the other. Now essentially the Thor 4 is ATN's current flagship smart thermal optic, whereas the Thor LT is more or less a bare bones thermal optic that comes at a lower cost point and smaller package and less weight overall. So although it is more streamlined, it lacks quite a few features that the Thor 4 includes, which may not be a big deal to some and maybe to others. But I wanna go ahead and address some of those things real quick and I'll keep this video as brief as possible and in doing so, I just want to say this is not a dedicated review of either optic. If you want the nitty gritty details of either of these, check the description below. I will have a dedicated review for both of these optics to help you out further if you need some more specs. Now, essentially, when you're looking at the Thor 4, you're going to be paying a little bit extra. The base model Thor 4 starts around $2,000, and that is for increased resolution. In fact, the base sensor that you can get on this is a 384 and it goes all the way up to a 640, whereas the base sensor on the Thor LT was a 160, but now with their new generation, they've bumped it to a 320. So 320 compared to 384, the sensor resolutions themselves are getting closer, uh, but we'll go ahead and talk about the next thing you're paying for, which is the features of the Thor 4. Now the Thor 4 can record video. It does have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth interface that connects to ATN's um, proprietary app that you could download on any smart device which allows you to interact with the optic. You can change your reticle. You can view the library of media you may have recorded, whether pictures or videos, since this can record both of those. Additionally, what I think is pretty useful is you can actually watch the feed from the scope in real time. So if you take someone hunting with you, uh, they can see what you're doing, or you take a novice hunter, you can monitor what they're doing to make sure they're taking a safe shot and that they know what they're looking at and give real time feedback. So that's pretty valuable there. Additionally, it does have the processing power for a ballistic calculator on board. So as long as you have enough ballistic data such as muzzle velocity, bullet weight, uh, ballistic coefficient, et cetera, plugged in and you enter the range manually, it will change your zero for you, whereas the Thor LT won't do any of that. And on that note, this actually works with their laser rangefinder or their ABL that can attach to this optic and communicates in real time what range that you're aiming at currently so that again, you have that ballistic calculation and one last note on their ballistic calculation that's still kind of tied in on the bells and whistles that this guy has here is their new mil dot reticle, which again is just another interface, a reticle that will actually show you where your ballistic drop is at, again, in real time. So pretty cool features on the Thor 4 that again, Thor LT doesn't do any of those. But now if you're someone who just needs to uh, take care of business, maybe you're a farmer or rancher or any kind of hunter that you're, all you care about is really taking care of, maybe you got some coyotes or wild hogs at night and you are not really interested in recording it, you just wanna take care of some nuisances, um, Thor LT is gonna get the job done, it's gonna get it done very well. Again, circling back to the fact that now it is offered in a 320 sensor. Okay, real quick interruption from future me to past me who's been speaking to you in this video. I really want to drive one more point home in terms of the sensor resolution when comparing the Thor 4 and the Thor LT, specifically the Thor 320 that we're discussing in this video. So imagine your cell phone, which is probably about yay big compared to these optics. And when you happen to be watching videos, most of the time I can almost guarantee, especially on Facebook and other social media platforms, it's going to be about 720p. However, most of you may not even have realized that or thought twice about it because when you have a even 720p HD image shrunk down onto a screen the size of your cell phone, it appears really, really sharp. You've probably assumed it's full HD, 1080p, or even 4K, right? So I kind of talk about this in the Thor 320 review a little bit as well, but I want to drive this point home in this video. So hence the interruption real quick. Now imagine an even smaller screen that's roughly the width of this optic. The Thor 320 has a 720p resolution inside, and it is using a 320 resolution sensor. That being said, the difference between the 320 resolution sensor and the 384 resolution sensor in the Thor 4 is gonna be pretty negligible in terms of when you view it through the optic itself. So again, if you're someone who doesn't care about exporting the video out of the optic, you really only care about what it looks like when looking through the optic, 
I think you're going to be extremely happy with the Thor 320's performance. Now, would you blow it up on your computer screen after exporting video, assuming you can do so with the Thor 320, which again, like I said, you cannot do, then you'd probably notice the difference between the 384 resolution and the 320 resolution. And I'm not saying there won't be a noticeable difference when looking through the scope. There will clearly be a little bit more contrast on the Thor 4 and a little bit more detail. It may appear a little bit sharper, but again, unless you have them side by side, I would say you would not know. If I put this in front of you and said, hey, this is a Thor 4 and you've never looked through the two, you know, again, in the same environment, you'd probably believe me, you'd take my word for it, and you'd be pretty impressed and pleased with it. Okay, so I'll let me in the past finish this comparison video. Thanks again for bearing with me on the interruption, but I really needed to make that one point that I neglected to in the past. So base price of the 320 sensor is roughly $1,700 at the time of this video. The base price of the Thor 4 is roughly $2,000, but that comes with a 1.25 power magnification. Now, the... Uh, the Thor 4 can go all the way to almost $5,000 if you want to go for their um, higher sensor. So it's a 384 or 640 sensor and again a 160 or 320 sensor. So there's some differences there. You can get much more resolution out of the Thor 4 that the Thor LT caps at 320. Now for the rest of this video I want to talk about my experience with the 320 sensor and the 384 sensor in this Thor 4. Uh, first I'm going to talk about thermal sensitivity. And you're going to kind of have to take my word for it because unfortunately the Thor LT does not let me record video as I've stated. So I can't share comparison footage with you. Now one test I kind of do to test the close range thermal sensitivity that's not very scientific. However, it's pretty useful is actually watching my dogs walk across the carpet here inside my house. Now keep in mind carpet is not a very good conductor. It's actually more an insulator. So with the brief moment of contact that my dog's paws have as they walk across the carpet, um, both these sensors are able to detect that. Now that's a very minute amount of thermal energy being transferred from the dog's paw to again an insulator or carpet. Nonetheless, these can both pick it up. So I'm pretty impressed with that. The 320 sensor on the Thor LT keeps up with the Thor 4. Both can detect that very, very brief amount of thermal energy increase on the carpet and it's distinguishable by literally glowing paw prints, some tracks. Now, in terms of far range sensitivity or long range, uh, both these optics with a clear line of sight, no dust and dirt in the air and humidity or fog are able to detect things over 2000 yards. And that's not an exaggeration. I've actually ranged some cattle on top of a field and they were over 2000 yards away and both of these could see them. Now, obviously you won't know what it is at 2000 yards through either of these optics, no matter how much you digitally zoom in, but there will be glowing pixels at at least 2000 yards away, which is pretty incredible that they can pick it up from that far. And then you can move in closer to the area and investigate further if you're on a hunt and you know figure out what you need to figure out from there. So in terms of pure thermal sensitivity, the Thor LT is keeping up with the Thor 4 just fine. Not a real difference there. And again, with that being said, although you're lacking features, you're saving weight. This comes in at 1.6 pounds, as you see it right here, whereas this, as you see it, is 2.2 pounds. So that is going to make a difference on a long hunt. So it really comes down to what you want and what's more important to you. If budget isn't a factor, then I would say the Thor 4 is probably the way to go because you do get more features that you can kind of grow into. If again, simplicity is what you're after and you just don't want to overcomplicate your setup, then the Thor LT is going to make you incredibly happy. It's going to get the job done and it's going to get it done very well. Now, additionally, since the new Thor LT320 is newer, they've kind of updated things. The overall user interface is a little bit more user friendly, such as zooming in is just a quick button um, command on the top. It'll automatically zoom in from three to six power if we're talking about this three to six. Whereas the Thor 4, it actually has this scroll dial on the side, which I personally don't like as much as I like their new interface, which just is a quick zoom. Now, additionally, you can control the brightness, contrast, and basic settings from the exterior of the scope. Whereas the Thor 4, you have to get into the menu system. And being that the Thor 4 has more features, the menu system is significantly more complicated and takes more time to navigate that where, you know, talking about the Thor LT, it's just a non-issue because there aren't features to complicate the scope. So feature packed, a little bit more complicated, a little bit more expensive versus simple, lighter, and less expensive to the user. 
hopefully this answers some questions between the two. Um, again, to really get the fine-tuned details, check out the independent reviews. I think that'll shed some more insight. Like I said, I wanted to keep this as brief as possible so you kind of get a feel of really what the difference is between the two and what you get when you're talking about either the Thor 4 or the Thor LT. Now, as always, I'd really like to thank you for taking the time to stop by and watch this video. And as always, have a good one.